We've already learned that there are living, or biotic, and non-living, abiotic elements within a forest ecosystem. However, in order for that system to work efficiently, there has to be energy. Just like gas is required for a car to run, the energy in this case doesn't come from gas, but has levels within the system that transfers energy from one level to the next. These are called trophic levels, and we're going to explore what that means and how the energy travels from level to level. Simply put, there are plants which give animals energy. Then those animals that eat the plants get eaten by other animals. They get energy from the animals that eat the plants. Plants are the basis of all of these levels. These are called autotrophs or producers because they produce their own energy. Heterotrophs are animals that eat either plants or other animals. These are the consumers. So animals that consume other things in order to get their energy. We are heterotrophs. Depending on what that animal eats, they're either a predator or they are a prey. But sometimes they are both. Typically, a prey animal eats plants, but they might eat both plants and animals. Typically, a predator only eats animals, but they might eat both plants and animals. An easier way to think of it is through a food chain. So a food chain is a series of organisms that eat one another. It always starts with the producer or a plant, which gets their energy from the sun. Then the primary consumer is typically an herbivore, like the rabbit or the deer. They only eat plants. A secondary consumer, like this fox, is typically an omnivore, and they eat both plants and animals. However, this makes it a little confusing because they can be both predator and prey. As you can see here, the fox is a predator that eats a rabbit, but it's also a prey animal that can be eaten by an eagle. An eagle is a tertiary consumer, or the apex predator. Apex predators are almost always carnivores, or animals that only eat meat. And they are at the top of the food chain. A food chain is a simple food transfer. So it always starts with a plant, and then it moves to an herbivore, or a primary consumer, and then a secondary consumer, or an omnivore, and then finally it ends with a tertiary consumer, or the carnivore, and the top predator. And it ends, eventually, with decomposition. So an example of a land-based food chain, or a terrestrial food chain, would be a ladybug in the grass. And the mouse would eat either one of those. But then, unfortunately, the mouse would get eaten by a snake. Now, the food chain could end with the snake eating the mouse, but because the snake is also a prey animal to an animal like an owl, it may continue until it gets to the top of the food chain. Owls and predatory birds are the apex predators at the top of the food chain. The only thing that's going to kill the owl is typically going to be some disease or something like that. An aquatic food chain could start with an aquatic plant and then an insect lands on the plant in the water. That insect then is captured by a fish that comes out of the water, but then that fish has many predators that might be able to eat that, such as this otter. So that would be the end of this simple food chain. However, that same fish, well, maybe not the same fish, but a fish like that one could also be eaten 
by a raccoon. This complicates things and introduces the idea of a food web. The food web is more complicated than a food chain because there are several chains within the food web. So for instance, it still starts with a plant, but that plant might be eaten by a deer, that might be eaten by a mountain lion, but that same plant might be eaten by a rabbit, and that rabbit might be eaten by a snake, or the mountain lion, or some other type of predator. And so there are several different chains within a web. They're all interconnected. So there might be many different food chains that start from one particular plant. For example, this acorn could be a source of food for the chipmunk. The chipmunk then becomes the source of food for the fox. The fox is the apex predator in this case. But as we saw before, the fox is not always going to be the top of that particular food chain because that fox could also be the source of food for a predator that's higher up in the food chain, like the eagle. So staying within the food web and returning to that acorn, the deer might be a consumer of the oak tree or the acorns on the oak tree. But then the deer is a typical source of prey for many different animals. They have to be very aware and are often on alert so that they can escape if a predator is near, like this wolf. So the wolf is a predator of the deer and this is the top of this particular food chain because the wolf is the apex predator in this food chain. Now, still within that same food web is a blue jay who is eating an acorn from the oak tree. And then the blue jay can potentially become a prey animal for something like a raccoon. The raccoon, being an omnivore, eating both animals and plants, is often at risk for being a prey for an animal like a bobcat, especially when they are young. So animals are often more at risk for being prey when they are a young animal than when they are an adult. Finally, at the end of every food chain is the decomposers because they are what will take whatever is left of animals that were eaten or of the apex predators when they die and they will help break those animals down into soil just like when the log is broken down into soil when a tree falls. So ultimately, the food web and all of the food chains within it are the transfer of energy within each level. So these trophic levels that we've discussed each have a different level of energy that they're offering into this system. So why do you eat? You eat because your stomach rumbles and tells you you're hungry. So you eat to replace the food you've used up as energy to move and live throughout the day. Animals have to do the same thing. They need energy to live, to breathe, to move, to get their food, and even to sleep. Their energy comes from what they eat, and the food pyramid shows how the amount of energy available for each trophic level becomes lower as the levels become higher. So energy is transferred along food chains. However, the amount of available energy decreases from one trophic level to the next. The most energy available is from the producers or plants because they get all of their energy from the sun and they don't have to work hard to get their energy. 
However, animals have to work hard to get their energy or food. So with each trophic level, there is energy lost by the animals losing heat through their efforts to get their food. Because of this loss of energy, the amount of energy that's passed between levels is only about 10% from one level to the next. This transfer of energy within the ecosystem is very organized and delicate. And when an animal is removed from the food chain, like when an animal becomes endangered or extinct, and their population falls, the system starts to struggle to work efficiently. Kind of like if your car runs out of gas, it can't run anymore without the energy.